The young boys are thought to have been around 12 and 13 years old. In their 16th century Mexico, paganism was prevalent, especially among the indigenous tribes. When the child martyrs refused to sacrifice their Catholic faith, they paid with their lives. Father Raymond Rodin is the pastor of Our Lady of Sorrows Church in Corona. He often travels to Mexico and his devotion to the country's martyrs is strong. The uh, three boys were uh, catechized, uh, evangelized, catechized, and baptized by the Franciscan missionaries. The heroic youngsters remained true to the sacrament, but their pagan fathers opposed the beliefs. When Crystal Ball destroyed several pagan statues, his tribal chief father erupted in anger. And that's when he, uh, he beat his son half to death and then threw him in a fire. Despite the torture, Crystal Ball forgave his father. That forgiveness is also heroic virtue. Uh, in, in such distress, he was able to forgive. One of the other soon-to-be saints, Antonio, also lived in a tribal family, where the third boy, Juan, was employed. Juan was Antonio's um, uh, servant. He had his own personal servant. They were also friends, though. You know, they treated each other as friends, as brothers. They also followed Christ. When Juan and Antonio rejected paganism, other members of the tribe clubbed them to death. All three martyrdoms occurred in the early part of the 16th century. Today, at Our Lady of Sorrows Catholic Academy, students are becoming familiar with the inspirational stories. They had a very strong faith that to be willing to die for that, for our God because like not everyone does that. That proves that they have much more faith in the Lord than anything else. And they're encouraged to learn young boys of similar ages are on the verge of becoming saints. It doesn't matter what age, it matters if our faith, if we believe strongly enough in God, anything is possible. Crystal Ball, Antonio, and Juan will be elevated to sainthood by Pope Francis this Sunday in St. Peter's Square. In Corona, Queens, Tim Harfman, Currents News.